This is Algebra 2 with Trig, Unit 9.2. We're talking about combinations. We probably won't do binomial theorem. We've done that already this year. So a combination is a selection of R objects from a group of N objects where the order is not important. Now you got to pay attention to that. It's easy to write the word and ignore the rest. A combination order is not important. That's like a team. If you think about three by three basketball, if you have three people, it doesn't matter how they're announced out onto the floor, that's considered one group or one team. That's called a combination. But if you're talking about the order's going to matter, like we did yesterday with permutation, permutation order matters. Combination order does not matter. So we have a formula that we can use to calculate combinations. It's very similar to permutations. When we did the permutation, that was n factorial over n minus r factorial. That was how we calculated permutations. So that's like picking three people in a and order matters. Well, we divide out all the different ways that they can be repeated. That's what this R is doing. So it makes the number smaller. So we're going to come over here and try to calculate what 5C3 is. Well, one way we could do that is to say 5 factorial over 5 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial. Because we have our n, that goes in the n, the 5 is our n, the 3 would be considered our r, and we fill up our formula. So this is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 over, this is going to be 5 minus 3, which is 2. So 2 times 1, because it's 2 factorial, times 3 factorial. And we reduce away what we can. So you can call this 20 divided by 2, or you can reduce the 4 and the 2, and that would become 10. So there are 10 ways, if you have 5 objects, to choose 3 of them. If you have 5 hats, and you're going to take 3 hats to school, not sure why you'd do that, but if you have 5 hats and you're going to take 3 hats to school, there would be 10 different ways that you could do that. 10 different sets, 10 different groups. Order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how you picked the hat. It matters did you take the hat or not. 7C2. Well, we can also use our calculator. So if you come to your calculator, you can hit the number 7. Then you hit the math button, which is right here. Scroll over to probability, and you'll see combination. It looks like it's number three. Then you would need to type the R value, which is two. So you have 7C2, and that is 21. So you can do it with a formula. You can do it with your calculator. We can also do it with Pascal's triangle. We'll talk more about that at another time. So, playing cards. Now, some people aren't very aware of, of a deck of cards. And if you haven't played cards, it seems very foreign to you. But if you are a card player, you already have an advantage with these because you, you're more familiar with what's going on. So these are called spades. The first column is the spades. The second column is clearly the hearts. Then we have diamonds. And the last column are clubs. So sometimes we will refer to them as clubs or diamonds or hearts. 
and it's nice if you could have a visualization of what we're referring to. These are face cards. So notice that the king, the queen, and the jack, they are all falling under face cards. Not the ace. The ace is not a face card. That's a common question. There are 12 face cards. And then the next topic is the spades and the clubs. Those are the black cards. And the hearts and diamonds, those are the red cards. I don't know if that little brackets I just did helped or not, but you have the black cards that are spades and clubs, and you have the hearts and diamonds that are considered the red cards. So you need to know those to answer many of these questions. So you either have to keep referring back to this, and this chart will be on your final exam. Okay, it may not give you all the information, perhaps, but you'll, you'll need to be familiar with this topic. All right, so a standard deck of 52 playing cards, that's what this is considered, a standard deck, has four suits and 13 cards in each suit. That's 13 of them right there. In, if the order in which the cards are dealt is not important. Listen to that. That's very important. The order is not important. That tells you this is a combination because it doesn't matter which card you get first. You just got the card. Order doesn't matter. How many different four card hands are possible? So if you're a card player, if you're a gambler, this is kind of how all those calculations are determined. This has to do with that. The probability of things happening is all about these calculations. So, how many cards are we talking about? How many cards are available in a hand if we're talking about a standard deck? 52. And how many cards are we taking? We're taking four cards. We're being dealt four cards. It doesn't matter in what order. It doesn't matter of how many people are playing with you. The question is, how many hands are possible? And using our calculator, we would come up with 270,725 hands. That means the group of cards that you could receive you could play 270,000 games and never have the same four cards. You might have three of them the same, but you would have another one that was unique to that group. And how many four-card hands contain all four cards of the same color? So up here, this is just four cards. They might be all red cards, they might be all black cards, they might be all face cards, they might be all the aces. Who knows? How many different ways can you have four cards all of the same color? So let's break that down into two categories. We have the color category, and then we have the actual getting the cards category. You have two colors that you're working with and you're choosing one color. You don't actually choose it, but there are two ways. You could have gotten the black cards or you could have gotten the red cards. From those specific colored cards, how many are there that you can choose from? 13. There are 13 hearts. There are 13 diamonds. So there are 26 of any given color. There are 13 hearts that are red. There are 13 diamonds that are red. So there's 26 that are red. 
there are 26 that are black. So there's 26 of that color, whatever color is picked, and you're choosing four of them. So that becomes, there's just two choices. 2C1 is the number 2 times 14,950. There's apparently 14,000 different ways that that can happen. So there's 29,900 hands. Questions about that? Do you understand why we're multiplying? Because we want the colors to happen here and we want the four cards to happen here. And you just don't want to say 26 because there's 26 of the same color because you might be red or you might be black. So there's two different ways you can get the same color. So that's why the two is important. Try the flip side. Here they're talking about the and and or events. When finding the number of ways both event A and event B can occur. You have two events, A and B. You need to multiply. Multiply when you have and. And means multiply. When finding the number of ways that event A or event B can occur, you're going to add. If you want this or you want that to happen, This is an adding situation. If you want this and you want that to happen, that's a multiplying question. So here, how many different committees of exactly two seniors and two juniors can be chosen? You have a student senate. Six people of the student senate are seniors. Five are juniors, four are sophomores, three are freshmen. Okay, that's a total of 18. There's 18 members. How many different committees of exactly two seniors and two juniors can be chosen? So we have a special committee. They're going to decide when we're going to have our cookie day, right? And we're going to have the seniors and juniors decide that. Well, we can't take all six seniors and all five juniors because they would never come to a conclusion. So we've got to narrow down that subcommittee. So how many seniors do we have to choose from? Six. You have six seniors to choose from. And how many are you going to choose? Two. Now, this is a combination question because the order doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're picked first. It doesn't matter if you're picked second. Then we have juniors. We have five juniors to choose from, and we're taking two. 5C2. You want both seniors and you want juniors, so it's got to be a timesing situation. So what is 5C2? That's the number 15. Or that's 6C2. 5C2 is the number 10. We could do the calculations from those. You can use your calculator to determine that. So there's 150 committees. That consist of two seniors and two juniors. Seems like a whole bunch of them, huh? How many different committees of at least 14 students can be chosen? Now this starts to get a little complicated. First of all, what does at least mean? This means 14 or more. Okay, if you're going to have at least 14... There's 14 students in here that have eights. 
That means exactly 14. Or is there at least 14? That would be 14 or 15 or 16 or 17. Uh, in this case, it's going up to 18. Okay? So, at least 14 students in this situation, we would do 14 C, no, uh, we do 18, sorry, 18 C 14 plus 18 C 15 plus 18 C 16 plus 18 C 17 plus 18 C 18. I guess I didn't need to write it on this sheet of paper, did I? So 18C14, 18C15, 18 so if you did your calculation, you'd use your calculator, you would figure out that there are 3,060 different ways 14 people can be chosen out of the 18. There's 816. There's 153. Now let's talk about these little easier numbers to work with. How many different ways can you choose 17 people of 18 possible? How many ways is that possible? Can you visualize that in your mind? What's happening? What do you mean? How can you choose 17 people of 18? One way. One way. There are 18 ways. There's one way to leave one person out. You're choosing 17, so you're leaving one person out. You could have left the first person out, or you could have left the second person out, or you could have left out person number three. There are 18 ways to choose 17 people. There's one person you left out, and you had 18 people to choose from who you're going to leave out. So there's 18 ways. How many ways are there possible to choose 18? There's only one way to take everybody. You took everybody. So there's 4,048 committees. Your calculator can help you with those, but these are more visually acceptable to understand. These you would definitely have to calculate out. I agree. So this at least means that we are adding them together. We want juniors and seniors, so that's why we're multiplying these together. That's what we're recognizing right now. This is a multiplying situation. This is an adding situation. You don't want 14 people and I want 15 people. That doesn't make sense. You're either going to do 14 or 15, so that's why it's a plusing situation. All right, here's what I really wanted my sheet for, okay? Sometimes with at least or even at most, what does at most mean? That number or less, okay? So you got to pay attention to is it an at most question or an at least question. But during the year, the girls' basketball team is scheduled to play 10 home games. If you want to attend at least three games, so you have 10 home games, we're going to attend at least three. So what does that mean we can attend? That means we're going to attend three or more games. So one way we can think about this is 10C3 plus 10C4 plus 10C5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. Now, that's a lot of calculations to, to put together, but it's reasonable, right? There's eight calculations in there. 
and you, you could do that. There are other shortcuts. What if this number was not 10 home games? What if there's 162, all right, or 81 in the major leagues, home games? That would be a lot of calculations to do. So we, we don't want to have to do all of those calculations. But that is one way you could do it. You could just do the calculations that are needed. You could answer the question. Now, let's take a look at the other options. The ones that we haven't considered yet would be 10C2, 10C1, or 10C0. We, we haven't considered these. And if you go through and calculate all of the possibilities, we have 10 games, you're going to attend zero of them. There's only one way you can attend zero games. You went to none of them. There's only one way that that can happen. You went to none. There are 10 ways that you could go to one game. You either went to the first game or you went to the second or the third or the fourth. You have 10 choices. There are 45 ways that you could choose two games. The first and the second game you went to, or the first and the third, the first and the fourth, the first and the fifth, all the way up to ten. Or two and three, two and four, two and five, two and six, all the way up to ten. Three and four, three and five, three and six. Lots of different ways. There's 45 of them. And if you add all of these up, keep putting the numbers underneath, the shortcut for this is going to be two to the tenth power. You want to hear that. To add up all the ways that you can attend 10 games, the shortcut for doing so is just 2 to the 10th power. You went to the game or you did not go to the game. There are 10, uh, 1,024 ways that that can occur. I don't get it. You, you, can, you can go to one game, yeah. or you can go to no games. You can go to one game, two games, three games, four games, all the way up to I went to all ten games. Oh, yeah. There's a certain number of ways that this is possible. Yeah. Okay, you, There's one way you can go to no games. There's ten ways you can go to one game, and so forth. These get to be much larger. Of course, there's only one way to go to all ten games. You attended them all. So why did you say 2 to the 10? Like why not 3 to the 10? Right. Um, it, it's a pattern that happens with these. It's because you went to the game or you did not go to the game. There's two opportunities. 2 to the 10th power. It's always going to be 2 for these combinations. You either did or you did not. It's either counted or not counted. So it's 2, and because we're talking 10 games, the total possibility of all the ways that that's possible is to the 10th power. If there were only nine games, it would be two to the ninth power. Okay, so there's 1,024. The shortcut for this is to notice that this adds up to 56, much easier to calculate, and take your 1,024 and minus your 56. That would be the shortcut. So when we come down here, and we're looking at, instead of adding up all the different ways that you're going to go, you could subtract the number of ways you're not going to attend. That's just a shortcut. So we figured out that 2 to the 10th power was 1,024. That was adding up that entire long row. Adding up that entire row is 2 to the 10th power. And we identified that the games you were not going to attend, not considering, was 56. So the shortcut is to take your 1,024 and minus your 56 
and you can get to your answer a little bit easier. Combinations of attending three of attending three or more games. Now some people get confused because we did it looking at zero, one, and two, but that's because it was a lot less counting, a lot less calculations. If we want to know three or more, we can look at two or less. If you want to know three or more, you can also take three or less and subtract that from the total possible. Just a shortcut method. 